Hey folks, this week we're going to talk about something really interesting called a diamond drag bit. A diamond drag bit is fun to play with for a number of reasons. You can do etching in metal, in plastic, in glass, and you can also get an incredibly fine detail with this. The tip on this thing is 0.005, so you get a really fine line with this. Uh, you also have this spring-loaded tip so that you get a constant pressure across on your material. It's also really easy to rerun passes with this and not worry about you know, boring through your material or anything like that. Um, today we're gonna go ahead and cut a magnetic business card and I'll show you what that looks like. Now, these are some metal business cards. They're made of an anodized aluminum colored top and they etch really nicely. I've got these from a place called Ring Lord and I'll put links down in the thingy. Um, they come in a variety of colors and they're a really nice stiff thing. They're not gonna bend, they're not gonna, you know, fold up into nonsense in, the, in your pocket or anything like that. But uh, we'll go ahead and use our diamond drag bit to etch some information on here and a little picture. Um, we can do both sides and I'll show you how that's done. And then next time we'll make a little card holder for them. So let's get started with etching these. Okay, we're going to start here with just a simple centered rectangle. This is the same size as our card, which is for me this. Um, I would definitely measure with a set of calipers just to make sure that you're getting the right inf information for what you get. There can be some variation in these cards, so it's a good idea to check first. Now, we could just come in and do, you know, the standard thing where we set our name. You know, drag that down and arrange that however we want. But A, that's kind of boring, and typically the other information you give is phone number and email address. And while I love all of you, I am not putting my email address or my phone number up online for you. Thanks, but no thanks. So we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to pull in a design that I created earlier in another program. All right, I got some extraneous stuff here if I reset my view. It grabbed the edge of my design too, which I don't particularly want. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to grab these guys and bring them down here. First thing I actually want to do is I'm going to zoom in, deselect my circle, and I'm going to group the rest of these guys. Now, before I do that, actually, let me show you. These guys are really just an arrangement of single diamonds next to each other right so it's a pretty simple thing to create and this oval is a pretty simple thing to create however carbide create doesn't really do diamonds very easily nor does it do ovals very well so i went ahead and created this particular pattern at approximately the right size that i needed in a different program um, you can use inkscape you can use omnigraphle there are a bunch of different programs just output it to svg when you're done so backing up again let's go ahead and save this and group it. All right, we're going to group him. And we're going to grab this and this and reset our view. And using our alignment tools, we're going to align these to the stock to so make sure everybody's centered. Cool, that's got us all centered and we look like we're lined up where we need to be. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go in and I'm going to duplicate my circle here. Copy, get him kind of up and out of the way for right now. And then I'm going to select my grid line, my diamonds here, and then I'm going to select the original circle that's centered on them. Notice I've got my little dotted outline there. Now I can come over here and I can subtract that out. And now I've got this little cutout here, and I can get rid of that. So now we want this guy to come down and fit here. So I'm going to select that. Oops. I need to regroup those now. Set my view. 
uh, uncheck the circle and that and group these guys again okay cool so now we've got that now we're going to select everybody and go back and center again line to stock bang okay cool so I want this little oval as something I can use in my design and I'm going to select it and then I'm going to come in and do one three yeah that's a little better okay and then I'm going to come in from that another three so now I've got duplicates of those I'm going to take these outside two and I'm going to group them because I'm going to want to cut in between those two and create a pocket so I'm just going to go ahead and group those so I can grab them later now let's reset our view and we've got this All right. now we want to put some text in there like I said I'm just going to do this because I can I'm going to go down and this is one that I downloaded all online called Scriptina Pro that I like a lot for kind of a signature looking font name oops grab it All right, we're gonna center that gonna make it bigger yeah that should be about right and then I'm gonna add some more text down beneath something a little less flowing let's get something a little bit more just basic uh, let's go to Homa. Okay. Shrink that down just a bit. Sometimes it wants you to hit enter and sometimes it wants you to hit apply. You just kind of have to decide. So I'll put that down here. All right. So now we've got all of our design elements that we need. And we need to set up some tool paths. So let's zoom in a little bit just so we can grab these a little easier. Let's start off with our diamond pattern here. Um, I'm going to grab it here because it will let me grab all of it at once. You'll notice if I go into toolpath, I can only grab one of these at a time, but if I go in design, I can grab them all. So now I've got these selected, and since this is one and this is one, but this is just empty space as far as it's concerned, I can do a pocket here. And I'm going to do a pocket, and I'm going to do, let's see, I want to do about an eighth of an inch, one, two, five. That'll be good. And I'm going to choose my V-mill that I've set up before. And this one is 0.005 V-mill. If you don't have one, go ahead and edit your library here. Add one in. So here is my diamond drag bit, right? Uh, it's got a point diameter of 0.005. So that's the tip. Uh, these two aren't really relevant because we're not using it for v-carving and I just set it for one flute uh, the one thing that you are gonna find you need to do is unfortunately carbide create calculates your speeds automatically and it sets this depth per pass to zero if you try and output g-code like this it is going to die it will just freeze and you'll get nothing so we're going to set our depth per pass to 125, which is the same depth we're going to be carving each time. Remember, this is spring-loaded, so the depth per pass isn't all that critical. We just make, need to make sure there's some compression on that spring. But we need this depth per pass to be the same as what we're cutting so that we don't wind up having to make multiple passes on each of these. So I'm also going to set the feed rate to 15 inches and the plunge rate to 15 inches 
and tell it OK. All right, so now we should have a pocket. And those are nice and filled in. OK. OK, so now we've got that one. I'm going to go back over to the design again. And I'm going to select this outer ring. And we're going to go ahead and pocket in the middle of there. So we're going to pocket this one. And then this inner ring, we're going to go ahead and do just a line on. So we'll have kind of a thick outer ring and a thin inner ring to deal with. So on that, let's go into Toolpath, Contour. We're going to pocket the same way. It's still got my 5-bit up here, but it also still has this depth per pass. You unfortunately have to set that for each one. It's kind of a drag, and I wish they would change it. But for right now, you kind of need to do it. And as I said before, if you don't do it, when you export the G-code, it is going to crash. So we set that to our max depth of 125. Okay. And now we'll do our inner ring. And this one, remember to do this. It's tedious, but remember to do it. Okay. One, two, five, two, five. And we're going to set this one for no offsets. We're just literally going to trace that line. And ring, circle, whatever. Consistency is for weak minds. All right, so now I want to select my text and text. Okay, so now with my text selected, I want to go ahead and do another pocket. And we're going to do the same thing. Call this text. Okay. Now, one thing I want you to notice is if I zoom in on this, there's some places where even our little tiny end mill is not getting down in there. So those are places that it's not actually going to carve. So what I want to do, it's not necessary to do it for these because these are thick enough, but these cursive looking lines have some definite tiny places in them. So I'm going to select the cursive piece, right? And then I'm going to do an additional pass on those. And what I'm going to do this time is a no offset pass. Okay, so at the very least, those will at least get traced on the outside, even if they're not filled in. I should still get a pretty decent line with that. I'm going to call this outer text. Reset my view. That looks like what we want. And we're going to save our G code. And we're going to save the same thing as we saved our file as. Okay, now we should be ready to go out and do a little bit of etching. So now we're going to cut out a little template here that we can use to hold our card stationary while we do our carve. This is a block of three-quarter MDF. I've got bolted down. It's set up to be approximately in where the machine thinks the center of my waste board is. And if I hit the rapid position for the, for the center, you'll see this. Okay. And since my design, my cutout for my card is centered on this, we know that we agree on what center is right here. And now all I have to do is set my Z-axis and we should be ready to go. And that should be ready. I can load up my file now. We can go ahead and cut. Okay, so here we have our metal card down inside of our holder that's centered on our waste board. And we come over to Carbide Motion. We're gonna jog rapid position to the center. So we already know this is our X and Y zero. And then we're going to drop this guy down. 
Okay, so that's about zero. Now, the one nice thing about this is also that I don't have to turn the router on. I also don't have to use any dust collection. It does its thing all by itself, and we just hit go. Okay, so here we've got our final product. It's always a good idea to go ahead and check and make sure we got all the spots we think we, think we should. Um, otherwise, you can just go ahead and drop this down a little bit and run it again. All right. So, I think we get some pretty good detail with that. And if you wanted to go with something fancy like this, you could also just do name and number on the back then. So, these kinds of things give you a lot of really nice definition with this um, diamond drag bit and a lot of opportunities to do some really interesting projects with it. So next time what I'm going to do is show you how to make a little card holder box like this so that you can put your new cards in and keep those down in your pocket. Um, you can also do some carving on this or just use some nice woods, but we'll go ahead and talk about making one of these next time. <laughs>